All right, let's see. World of Warcraft players should be excited about Ashes of Creation. I don't necessarily agree. I would say MMORPG players should be... I want Again, an excited is just such a bad word, in my opinion. Never be excited about a game because you're likely to be disappointed, right? Unless, again... It, the thing is, the way I see it, it's like if you're overly hyped about a game, you'll it will never meet your expectations, right? Same with, like... Elden Ring, in my opinion, if you had no expectations, you probably were even more astonished by it than people who had high expectations. But the thing is, Elden Ring is a very... It's a very small chance that a game has a high expectations and releases and people are so happy about it, right? No one even cared about all the bugs that came out with it. It was just overall a very good game. But FromSoft is just known to deliver quality games, right? But as far as MMORPGs go, when was the last time you got a really good MMORPG? At, at re on release, you know? On release, all MMORPGs so far in the last 20 years at least were shit, okay? I don't want to include WoW Classic into it because let's not go into it. But in my opinion, for 2003, yes, WoW was fantastic but now even a, a, a point oh expansion right a sp expansion release is not even a good game you'd have to wait a few patches a few major patches before the expansion of wow becomes good right uh and new mrpg releases it's never good okay when lost ark was released in 2013 it wasn't a really good game overall leveling was extremely slow there was like not much to do at end game and it was pay to win is it a very good game now? Probably. A lot of people are enjoying it, even though it's pay to win. You are still, if you just play it regularly, you can still do all the content, stuff like that. Are you going to be the top of the top? No. The PvP is balanced overall. You can't really pay to win PvP in Lost Ark, stuff like that. So Lost Ark now is good. Was it good 2013? I kind of doubt it. Right? Um, ESO release. Dog shit. Final Fantasy release. ARR. Pretty bad. Okay, it wasn't bad bad but it was like you know it wasn't heaven's word which i found like okay but it wasn't Shadowbringers, right uh what else guild wars 2 in my opinion on release wasn't that good it was fine it wasn't good it was like you're missing a lot of things but when they start adding all that stuff they put a lot of work into it now it's a really good game new world don't even get me into it new world now i think is worth a shot compared to before before it was like everyone knew like there's no content Right? It's like, what are you going to do? Just level the one character forever? No, you're going to reach endgame content. There's nothing to do. Right? So, Ashes of Creation, the only reason I think Ashes of Creation might be good on release, because I feel like Ashes of Creation, even though they plan on a lot of content for endgame, they want people to take a very long time to get to endgame and really enjoy the world, level slow, and all that stuff. Though I think, like, I hope they never do it, but I feel like after a few years on an expansion or a DLC, however they're going to go about it, I hope they're not going to increase um, the leveling rate substantially and neglect alt content. So I really hope in that sense that it's more horizontal progression in that regard than vertical. But we'll see. Anyways, let's see what Zillion is saying about World of Warcraft. And Ashes. Why WoW players should be excited. Let's see. Get it. World of Warcraft was probably your first MMO. Or maybe it was the kind of MMO available when you got into the genre. Yeah, that that is the biggest one. Played it, and so you played it with them, and now you have hundreds upon hundreds of hours invested. It could be any one of a thousand reasons. And I'm not here to knock your choice of MMO. The other thing, the reason I think WoW was really good, like Classic was really good, because you really want to explore the world and you had that connection for Warcraft 3. So you want to explore the zones, the specifically the maps that you participated in, in quests or in missions during Warcraft 3. And when you saw that zone in like, like three third person view in the world you would go and explore everything about and see what that zone's about specifically eastern western plague lands after the lich king and stuff like that right so i think it had that appeal to it uh, a world without like massive story beforehand i don't feel like people care too much about exploring 
even though the way I saw Ashes of Creation when I was looking at the certain stuff about the game, I was like, I kind of want to explore this area. It looks really interesting to explore. So we'll see. But again, I, I will never, well, I never say never, but like I will more than likely not be excited about any MMO release before the game is out. Or your reasoning for making that choice. I just want to present to you a new idea. Let's go. I'm guessing that you've temporarily left WoW numerous times over the years. Oh, 100%. Whatever new MMO just released that every... Oh, 100%. I didn't even leave WoW for other MMOs. I left WoW because I left WoW. A lot of times, even if I left for a different MMO, I would play that for maybe a few months, and then I would play something like League of Legends or uh, Call of Duty or like any other game, really. Because it's like... When... I quit WoW, it was usually getting to the point where I just, I can't do this anymore. Like, I can't do an MMO anymore. WoW, like, just drained the soul out of me. That's usually how I quit the game. I was like, I'm fucking done. This is fucking bullshit. And then obviously I come back after a few patches when I feel like the game is better, which it is, it, it is for a patch, but, you know. Uh, but it usually didn't make me play other MMOs. I cannot ever play two MMOs at the same time. If I quit WoW... It means I quit MMOs for a bit. And instead of going back to WoW, I will try a different MMO. Right? It's like I can't have... I cannot have two MMOs on my mind at any one time. It's too much. And just like clockwork, you'd always find yourself back grinding away in Azeroth yep. very quickly. Yep. Have you ever wondered why you always go check out the new MMO? Wouldn't you just ignore a new uh... MMO if you truly loved the one you're playing? Why would I explore a new MMO? Why? Well, okay. Me personally, I wouldn't. A 1.0, in my opinion, is not worth it. I didn't even play New World, right? I was looking at just people playing it, and I was like, eh, not for me. But let's say someone else. Why would they explore a new MMO? I would say a lot of, not a lot, but like a good chunk of it is to prove to themselves that WoW is actually dog shit. Or they want a completely new start in a game that no one knows anything about. I think that would be a massive appeal. A completely new world, a completely new adventure when no one knows anything about it. Which is really hard with the internet these days. And I really, really hope Ashes of Creation, when they release beta and stuff like that, open beta and closed beta, I really hope they don't let you do too much, but just enough to know uh, that stuff in the game are working. So for example, certain systems like the node stuff, I would hope that there would be testing with people. However, I don't want testing on raids. I don't want testing on dungeons. I don't want any of those. The, all of those should be internal because when you, if you see that people, other people you, doing that content, it takes away from your value of doing it for the first time and exploring. It's really not worth exploring something if it's already been explored or you feel like people already explored it. Even now, if I go to a new MMO for me, if I go, let's say, for RuneScape, which, by the way, I will never will. I could just can't stand the graphics. But if I did, I would just look at guides to min-max right away because I would feel like... I don't want... like It's not even feel like... I would just don't want to be that idiot. You know, I just don't want to be that idiot that doesn't know what the hell and be exploring I either want everyone to be the idiot or no one to be the idiot. Basically, that I don't, that's my perspective on MMOs. I can't join a game where everyone knows what the fuck they're doing and you're just the new guy and you're like, well, I don't want to keep asking questions about everything kind of thing, right? Which is, it didn't really happen in Final Fantasy XIV for me because the content up until Shadowbringers, all the content, trials and everything, obviously I didn't do extremes at that time. But all the content up to Sharon Bringers, like the leveling, even the dungeons and the ra and the raids that I was doing and the trials were really not hard to figure out. I didn't have that feeling of like, oh, I'm the idiot, right? But if I go into an ESO right now and I try to do a veteran dungeon, I'll be like, what the fuck is going on? Because my character is able to do veteran. But if I go into a new veteran dungeon, I'll be like, ah, oh, fuck, man. I don't feel too good about this kind of thing. And it's like I feel like I bring the team down, all that stuff. But again, that's a personal feeling. 
I'm not trying to tell you that you need to cancel your WoW subscription and stare at a blank monitor screen waiting for this new game to come out like the rest of us Amen. lunatic Ashes fans. Yeah, don't do that. I'm saying keep an eye on the project. Do some research. That's fine. Gill, maybe learn about mm. the systems or the classes or the story. I'd say learn about the story, but don't do too much research. Doing to like look at gameplay and stuff, that's fine, but try to avoid as much as you can about the world. Anything that has to do with exploration of the world and lore kind of has to do with exploration, but not really. If you just learn the basic information, the history of the world, that's fine. But you don't want to know zone lore. You don't want to know what each zone is about. You want to discover it. You don't want to know where the hidden caves are, where the hidden dungeons, what this dungeon is about. You kind of want to discover it. If you do too much research, it actually works against you in your passion about the game. If you work and you explore it, I feel like you'll be way more connected to the game. Maybe you could watch some of my mini Ashes videos. Just saying. Maybe. Be ready to make the switch when the time comes. Now, why would you specifically, as a World of Warcraft player, consider leaving for Ashes of Creation when it finally releases? I don't like the terminology, though I would agree. Uh, like, I, like I said, I cannot play two MMOs at the same time, especially a new one, which would drain my soul. Um, so it will depend, like, would World of Warcraft release, like, a new patch or whatever uh, for a lot of players? And they're like, well, I can't really play Ashes because the new content is out in WoW, so I, like, whatever. But um, I honestly, like... I don't like the word leave. I would say take a break from it and try other shit. I would say that's more relatable. The problem with WoW is WoW really doesn't let you take breaks. So I agree with him when he says like you have to leave WoW to play other games because taking a break in WoW doesn't really work because of all the how important it is to do a weekly. You know, how important it is to do your weekly con like uh, grind. If you're super casual, then yeah, obviously it doesn't matter. But like if you're a top end game, which are, are like uh, a hardcore gamer and like, you know, it will be very hard to just like take a break from WoW and go into Ashes. You'll have to like you're basically sure quit it. This video, I talked to a bunch of friends and acquaintances that are or were hardcore WoW players trying yeah. to determine why they chose that particular game. And I kept getting the same two answers over and over and over. The first, very simply, it's the game all of my friends play, so I play it too. Fair enough. That answer was far less common than the second one I got so many times. And that answer goes something like this. I built so many cool relationships back when I first started playing. Yeah. Doing the early dungeons, grouping for quests and stuff. And I keep logging in trying to recreate that experience, but it never happens. I don't know about that. Like, this relates to my main reason. My main reason that it's so hard for me, to, was so hard for me to quit World of Warcraft. And again, as much as I don't want to play Dragonflight right now, I might still play it on release. And that's not even because of personal relationship or anything like that. It is because I put so much effort into my character throughout the years. I feel like letting go of the character is like... I wouldn't say like completely wasting my time, but okay, let's say that this. How would you feel if a game you really, really loved suddenly like had a server reset and deleted all progress or just the game shut down and there's no more of the game and all the progress you did in that game is just gone completely. Now take that feeling and multiply it by 10 because if someone removed the game and you're like, well, you know, it is what it is. It sucks. I feel like a waste of time, but it's like, okay, I'll move on. But for you to do it is a lot harder. For you to actually take yourself and be like, I'm done with this game. No more. The game had to really fuck you over for you to be like, I don't want to play this anymore. It's same as like, if you work at a job for like, let's say 10 years, and it's like, man, I really hate this job, but you never quit. But you're kind of relieved when someone fires you, <laughs> you know? It's like it's better for someone to like shut down the game for you to quit it than for you to be able to quit on your own. I don't, I don't know how to describe it. It's like it's just that feeling of just like letting go of the past is I guess maybe that's what it is. Letting go of the past is really hard. Letting go of all the progress you made is really hard. Uh, maybe that's what it is. 
Well, I'm pretty sure that I know exactly why that never happens. And it's actually a topic I've been screaming about for at least a decade. As we make it easier and easier and easier to communicate with each other, both in gaming and in real life, the more we cheapen the experience to the point that those relationships become completely transactional. It's why phone calls don't have nearly the effect of a face-to-face -face conversation, and texts have less effect than phone calls, and tweets have less effect than texts. I think the younger generation has even coined a term for this, calling it single-serving friends. Someone you sit next Never to heard on that. a plane or a bus or stand in line next to at a theme park attraction. You talk, exchange pleasantries, and whether oh. you had anything in common or not, you part ways and never think about each other again. Mm -hmm. If you think about it, Kind of like when you go to a bar and you pay, try to pick up chicks, you talk to like a hundred chicks, you're not going to remember all uh, the ones who said no. You're just going to, you know, you're just going to move on. It's like, yeah, well, you're never going to remember them. It's the yeah, same thing. It's like, you don't, you don't really care about these people. You're like, you're going to have a conversation to entertain yourself, but you don't really care about that. Group finder works in a very similar way, except that 100%. you don't even bother to exchange pleasantries most of the time. Load in kill thing and load out and don't think about the people who just helped you ever again the funny thing is as much as i agree with him this is never at least in my experience has never been true at the beginning of an expansion when shadow lens just came out almost every group i was in because i was i would say above average player and i was tanking the DPS and the healer, at least one person per group, sometimes two, but the majority of the time was at least one person, uh, was one person usually, would add me to friend, would do me if I want to run more and stuff like that. And even after that, we would do some mythic pluses together because they were a good player, I was a good player. But for the most part, I agree with him, this never happens afterwards. Mid-expansion, you're not going to really, like, unless you really try, you're not really going to find friends doing the content with like randoms. Don't you miss the excitement of meeting new friends while trying to complete a quest or asking around in general chat for people to go do a dungeon, getting to know people over a couple of hours of gaming together, checking your friends list to see if that awesome warlock from last night's dungeon is still around and wants to do something else. Some of my best friends today are people I met 20 years ago hanging around Pridwin Bridge while playing Dark Age of Camelot just looking for people to group with. Or people that I met trying to group for early World of Warcraft dungeons. I yeah. can honestly say I haven't fostered a single meaningful relationship in an MMO since all the convenience started getting added. Would it be because of the convenience or would it be because... I would say people are less social now online. Because, again, when you start playing World of Warcraft, there was, um, what do you call it, novelty in talking to people from other parts of the world, talking to people who, like, live 100 miles away from you. Even, honestly, even talking to people online that live, like, 5 miles away from you. You would not even care that you're a 13-year-old talking to, like, a 30-year-old dude. It was fine. Now everyone's very selective with who they talk to. It's like we don't like a guild doesn't accept people who are under 21. They want mature people, whatever, which again, I'm not against. I'm all for. But I think people are just way more selective because it's like they internalized how much um, how connected you are. It's like internalized before it wasn't as popular. Now, now that like you have your Facebook, you have your Instagram, you feel like you're connected to so many people. It's like you don't you don't feel forced or encouraged to connect with people online. I feel like the queuable content, the group finder stuff like that, wasn't made because uh, to ruin like it wasn't made, and then people start stop being social. I feel like it was made because people were not as social anymore, right? It just came probably at like a very similar time, but there must be a reason, right? Because the group finder was made to solve a problem more so than not people were probably complaining it's like listen i can't find a fucking group right i don't want to talk to people i just want to do the content and because there was a lot of more people like that you had group finders and that became standard because now people it's not that the commodity is there 
so people don't have to communicate it's that people weren't communicating and therefore there's the commodity i feel like that's more likely what happened rather than the opposite i feel like the commodity came to solve a problem not to cause a problem group finder mob tagging systems that give you credit for just hitting a creature that someone else had already engaged with giving you no need to communicate or set up a group to complete a quest having these extremely dumbed down versions of raids that essentially make the experience a sightseeing tour where absolutely no communication at all is required all of these systems that have been pioneered by world of warcraft and then adopted by virtually every other if you're doing a mythic plus 15 which again i would say majority of players are not doing there's also practically no communication between the players everyone just knows what they're doing so to say that that's why like commodity ruined it i don't know or like the 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 content is so easy that you don't need to communicate i also don't can't say that that's true i would say majority of players still cannot do a mythic 15 or in dragonflight a mythic 20 most play uh the only time the content that requires communication would be a mythic raid or a, a heroic raid somewhat but like let's be real mostly a mythic raid will require it and uh uh what do you call it um uh, pre-made pvp you would need communication other than that though uh like it's not that the content is hard it's that you just know what you're doing and if you don't know what you're doing you're kicked out other mmo are designed to increase convenience and they do do that but at the cost of value and meaning that would otherwise have been behind those interactions without the value and meaning no attachments are formed and the entire reason why you loved world of warcraft in the first place is gone and worst of all begun regardless likely you never even noticed it was happening also don't don't forget there are also Wrath of the Lich King was really popular because of Warcraft 3. Straight up, I think everyone knows this. War War Wrath of the Lich King was the most popular expansion, not because the game was at its best, but most likely because it was the most popular World of Warcraft. Also, a lot more people had computers and access to internet. The re And for a lot of people, War Wrath of the Lich King was the end of the Warcraft saga. They didn't care about Cataclysm, no one even knew who the fuck uh, Black, uh, Blackwing was, or Deathwing, sorry, who Deathwing was. No one knew anything about anything, they just knew Arthas. And also, because that happened, and you saw like that massive drop of players from 13 million to like 7 or 8 million, it's like almost half of the player base just up and left, it already left a bad taste in your mouth overall, right? It's like, oh, the game is just not as popular anymore, even though 8 million is... An, 8 11 whatever 10 million would still be a lot of people that i don't remember the number of cataclysm but it was a lot lower than wrath of the lich king and also the drop started in wrath of the lich king and i believe the drop started towards um like after icc was the current content when they released the next raid with the dragon whatever it was called um I think that was basically where it dropped because no one really really cared about that anymore. Everyone cared about Wrath of the Lich King. Uh, everyone cared about Lich King and about Arthas. So as soon as Arthas wasn't like, that was it, the content of Arthas is over, that's I think when people start leaving. And it has nothing to do with like the game becoming easier, more accessible, whatever. In my opinion, Cataclysm was substantially harder. And you would need a lot more communication in the, in the um, Cataclysm than you need in Wrath. But... That doesn't matter at that point because people just left and not i don't think they left because of commodity ashes of creation is taking the convenience out on purpose in order to foster those relationships we as mmo players all miss there is no group finder if you want to do a dungeon you've got to ask around for people to do it with you you're going to have to communicate with each other coordinate and organize when and where to meet who's going to do what role all of that you found a really hard quest with a tough creature you have to kill to complete. You can't just wait around for someone else to start combat and then jump in and help them and both of you get credit without so much as even acknowledging each other's existence. World bosses and Ashes of Creation get harder when you bring more people, forcing communication and working together. You can say the same about the world bosses in World of Warcraft. It really depends, like... Mm, I, I don't know man let's hear this point again i even noticed it was happening 
Ashes of Creation is taking the convenience out on purpose in order to foster those relationships we as MMO players all miss. There is no group finder. If you want to do a dungeon, you've got to ask around for people to do it with you. I mean... Uh, I don't know. I don't know if it's a good call or not. The problem is, like, is there going to be global chat? If there's global chat, will it be over, like, over bustling with people? Right? Is there going to be a specific chat for looking for group for specific dungeons? Right? If it's like you have to go to a city hub in order to find the group, like you have to chat there. Right? It's like... How many dungeons are there that are current? You know, it's like the bigger the world, the harder it will be to find a group without a group finder. Like straight up, I feel like that that's pretty much the case though, right? So I don't know. I, I think it's hard to say if it's gonna be good or not. It also depends how many players there are, how many players will be willing to do that content at all. Right? The group finder solves a lot of problems, and yeah, it like maybe there's a problem with communication, but like I feel like if you wanna be social, you will be. Just because you're going to a town being like, hey, uh, I'm looking for a party for this and this dungeon, doesn't mean you're going to be talking to those people, though. If anything, the dungeon should be something that you want to keep redoing, and it might be a bit of a pain in the ass. That's the only, like, the only time I would see that actually working and like you being social with your uh, mates, like with the group team, is if you want to grind that dungeon, and it's worth to grind the dungeon, but finding the group is a pain in the ass, then people would stay with you for the dungeon and you might start talking after like the third or fourth time you clear it. But if it's just a one-time dungeon, it doesn't matter. If it takes you longer to create the group, I don't think you'll be very social with those people either, either way. You're going to actually communicate with each other, coordinate and organize when and where to meet, who's going to do what role, all of that. You found a really hard quest with a tough creature you have to kill to complete? You can't just wait around for someone else to start combat and then jump in and help them and both of you get credit without so much as even acknowledging each other's existence. World bosses in Ashes of Creation get harder when you bring more people, forcing communication and working together. You're going to have to put mm. in effort. And through that effort, those relationships you form will gain value and you'll rediscover that lost love of meeting new people and forming new friendships you first experienced in World of Warcraft all those years ago before so much convenience was added to the game. Beyond that, Ashes has mm. features you're used to and some brand new systems for you to explore as well. Ashes has a hybrid combat system combining tag That's fine. and action combat that will allow you to use mostly tabs. I'd say the best thing about Ashes Creation is probably the combat system right now. The graphics are top notch and the graphics will last for a very long time. Also, it doesn't like computers in massive combats, which a lot of old systems uh, cause that issue. ESO, which is newer than WoW, has the same issue with massive combats, right? Um, Final Fantasy fixes it because it removes animation from other players. Like you can remove the animation, so it's not that big of a deal. But wow doesn't allow it i feel like the system of the game and the combat and the gameplay is really what's so much better than other mmos right now combat if that's the polish or mostly action combat if you're ready to make that switch or anywhere in between raids pvp deep and complex crafting mounts pets achievements world bosses yeah everything you have yeah and it has nine races 64 classes the problem is like collectibles don't mean anything if you don't care about the world if you don't care about the game so having all these collectibles is nice and all but it's like that doesn't tell you anything whether you'll care about it or not it's like how many people love pokemon right how many people love games that are like pokemon a lot less why because it's not pokemon anymore even though the gameplay might be even better maybe you have more collectibles but like you can't connect to the monsters you you take you just don't care about the world and it's all brought together by a never before seen in any MMO system called Nodes that will allow players to build or destroy cities that will lock and unlock content based on how the players interact with the world, ensuring no two game servers will ever be the same and always giving you something to do. The thing is, 
the number of planets that had to perfectly align to allow for the development of WoW in the first place is staggering. Mm. Starting with an already very in-demand IP, coupled with a studio that already had a tremendous amount of talent and had a trend line basically pointing straight up, and then the dumb luck foresight or mystical <laughs> wizardry that allowed them to come up with so many features that were novel back then but have been present in basically every mmo since everything coming together so perfectly was not likely to happen again for a very long time but i believe it has in ashes of creation if you're interested in Ashes mm. of Creation, you can go to ashesofcreation.com to sign up for a free account or if you want to help me out you can sign up using my affiliate link available in the description below Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see y'all in the next one. I don't know, it's hard to say. It's like there's so many va variables. Uh, I think player mentality also changed. Like as much as people say they want a game like Classic WoW, in my opinion, why? Okay, so why is no one playing Classic WoW now? Why is Season of Mastery so bullish, like so dead? There, you have all of those there. Where like, oh well, uh, it's more community driven, all that stuff. But it's like no one plays it, right? Do you think people will play it after Wrath of the Lich King? Maybe. Maybe, but like, where are all those people who are like classic Andes and it's like, no, no expansions for me, I just want classic. There's not that many. Classic was mostly a nostalgia thing. Having an MMO right now that is like co extremely back in the past, ha, or extremely like community driven, I feel like that's not gonna really work. Uh, but again, it's hard to say. It's really hard to say. It's like, you also have to come with the understanding that's like Ashes of Creation is made for more hardcore MMORPG players. In the sense, not necessarily like difficulty, but it's like it's really not casual friendly. If you play like once a week or whatever, not only are you not going to make progress, the world will keep changing and like you'll be lost every time you log in, right? It's made for people who can play regularly um, and... Uh, what do you call it? Yeah, just basically can play regularly and not like once here, once there. It's not a pick me up game. WoW is more a pick me up game than uh, most MMOs, really. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. I don't know if. I feel like even though they're both MRPGs, they're the way they are being designed are so different that I feel like today's World of Warcraft player will really not enjoy Ashes of Creation. Like a, a regular, not a, like a super casual, whatever, but like a regular WoW player who just loves end, end game content, plays like high end, whatever, they might not like Ashes of Creation. That's what I feel. Or people are like more, more like used to the commodity. I don't think they'll like Ashes of Creation. But we'll see how it goes because, again, things might change. Maybe they will add the group finder, like not instant group finder, but like a group maker kind of thing. Right, so, uh, yeah, those are my two cents. I don't feel like those are the reasons people should quit WoW for Ashes. I feel like, like again, will Ashes be the WoW killer? The only game that can kill WoW is WoW for the longest time. WoW has to really fuck up for people to leave it. So hopefully when Ashes comes out, WoW is going to be in a way worse state than it is now, which I know it's really hard to imagine. But that is probably the only way Ashes is going to get a lot of the WoW players in. Aside from like the first, like the launch period and like the honeymoon phase. I mean like long term. That's probably like the only way. Anyways, that's the reaction. Thank you for watching. The video is by Zillion. Link, Zillion, sorry. The link will be in the description below. And thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.